Hey guys, and welcome back to Planet Cryos. I've got a 13th gen Intel build here for a viewer, and uh, let's see if we can get this thing up and running for him and get it down to where he lives. Stick around. Alright, so I figured I'd do this in a little uh, a little differently. I was going to go ahead and talk about these parts um, one by one before starting the build, but I figured I want to introduce the parts as we're building it. You can kind of see either from the thumbnail uh, or the beginning, you can kind of see all the parts that are going in it, the, the main big parts. Um, kind of couldn't see the motherboard, but I'm going to uh, show you this step by step. And let's go and start with the case here. We have a Corsair 5000D. Um, and this is not the Airflow model, nor the RGB model. You can see it's got a flush um, solid panel on the front. Otherwise you'd have perforations in the front um, for better airflow. So this is the case he chose, excellent case. I have, uh, um, I have this case, but I have the Airflow model. So it's just a different panel on the front. Excellent case. The RGB model comes with obviously some RGB fans in it. Um, but otherwise, this is a great case, especially to work in. It's just nice. You have all kinds of cable management and stuff like that. So let me get these panels off and uh, um, start prepping the case um, and maybe install the power supply. All right, so now in every PC, every PC comes with its own hardware. Uh, it just depends. It varies usually where, where it's located. In this case, and in a lot of cases, it's usually in the mechanical hard drive slash solid state drive um, uh, tray or bay down here. Um, it could be in the front of the case or in the back. Usually you get a box or a bag of hardware, and you just got to take this tray out and um, I'll manipulate it in such a way to where you can just get this box out of here and put your tray back in. Normally I would take this tray out so I don't really use too many uh, mechanical hard drives uh, and that just uh, impedes in the area to put your power supply. Uh, speaking of which, he did get a large power supply so we may have to either remove this cage uh, or at least shift it back one spot if it'll allow us, which I do believe it will. Uh, and in the box usually just comes, uh, you got various screws for motherboard screws, uh, power supply screws, fan screws uh, sometimes. Um, they give you this, uh, this little adapter for your, um, uh, what do you call it, the uh, USB 3.0. It's just a 90 degree um, connector. Um, and so we get our screws. This also comes with another magnet for back here in case this one uh, wears out, I guess. I don't know. And there's no other spot to put one. And also in the box, you get a whole bunch of the Velcro uh, straps for cable management. There are at least three or four more in the box. I'm not going to bother taking them out. I'm not ready for these, and nor do I think I'm going to need them. We have limited cable management, uh, but we, we may need them for a couple areas. Otherwise, I'm just going to use zip ties. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to um, try and move this uh, mechanical hard drive tray backwards as far as we can. And to do that, there are just a couple of thumb screws right here. And let me get you zoomed in. Uh, maybe it'll help a little bit. So I realize it's kind of a challenge, so I get a little flashlight here, and I just want to show you. It's kind of a black case, so it's tough to see, even with a lot of lighting. So you can see there's two uh, thumb screws, one right here and one on the back. We're going to just remove those. And we're going to pull this out. And we're going to just examine. So it looks like we can go back... Um, it was in the farthest one, so we can go back one more slot. So about an inch and a half, maybe two inches further back. And we can put it right there. 
There we go. And now you can take your thumb screws and thread those back in. And for our power supply, we have the ROG Thor 1000 watt platinum 2 power supply. So um, this is a pretty nice power supply. This also comes with your new 12 pin connector for those graphics cards. Uh, I don't like those, but it does. So we're going to get this unboxed and this is kind of nice. I'll just point you down here a little bit more. What do we have? We have zip ties. We have Velcro straps. And um, it even comes with some cable um, separators to make it all look nice. This also comes with a nice bag. It comes with your power cable. Mm. The smell of new. So here's the back of it. Um, and then there's the inside where all the plugs will go. Pretty nice. All labeled nice where you can see it says, you know, your motherboard. You got your two pins there. CPU up top. And this right here you would hook up when you want your RGB. So when you get your power supply out of the box, basically what you're left with is obviously a power supply and you got your cables um, minus the zip ties and stuff like that that do come with it and the straps. Um, so you basically have to go through your cabling, figure out what you need for your particular motherboard and pull those out, install them on the power supply first. Um, that's always the best idea, especially with these some smaller cases you can't get in there after you install the power supply. You want to install the cables prior to doing that um, just for uh, room sake. So you're not left with the problem of taking the power supply back out. So let's see what we need. Uh, you're going to find in your power supply box, you're going to find four of these screws. And they're not very big. And depending on your case, now this case does not allow for us to see the wattage. This actually has RGB and all that, so we're not even going to hook up the RGB. I kind of thought I might be, but I forgot this case and we discussed it with him. Or I discussed it with him, not we. But I discussed it with him. He doesn't care about seeing this. Uh, he just wanted the better case uh, for this. And uh, he had to stick within a height range for the case. So we're going to put this in the traditional way, which is like this, with a fan drawing air in from the bottom of the case. And the bottom of this case has a filter on it, so anytime you have, uh, you know, once or twice a year, you pull this filter out, you blow it out, and you put it back in. And I'll put that back in in a minute. But um, So otherwise, I would have put this fan facing up if it had a window on the front side of the case that you could see this light up. But this is pretty nice. This will actually display your wattage right here in this window. It'll light up right here and this uh, corner uh, right here will light up. So it's pretty nice looking. Um, I have it over there on the She-Hulk build, um, but this case won't allow this. So, but he wanted a all Asus build and he wanted this 1000 watt. So this is what he gets. And we are going to, um, we may take this hard drive. Yep, we're gonna take this back out. And see, that's what I was saying. I'm gonna get that out of our way. Now we can be very nice and gentle with this and stick this in here. And once you have it slid in there pretty good, just line up um, the holes. You're gonna see there's a bunch of extra holes. That's for if you flip the power supply the other direction. So there's extra holes there, but you will see the uh, the holes line up pretty good. I mean, these are, these are high quality parts. This is a nice high quality Corsair case, and it's a high quality Asus power supply, so they should line up no problem. Now, when you torque these down, don't over torque them because they don't have a lot of threads that they're catching on, but you do want it snug so this thing's not rattling around, especially if you're shipping it. 
And for the motherboard, we have a Rogue Strix Z690F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Now, uh, a little bit about this. Um, I know this is a 690 and not a 790, and we are pairing it with a 13900K. Uh, the reason behind it is part of its price. Uh, it is cheaper for the 690 in the equivalent uh, motherboard. And the other reason is uh, he doesn't need all the little extras that it comes with for the price difference. Um, and also, the 790 chipset isn't mature yet. Um, it's still going to have some quirks. Um, I don't want him to get anything that he's going to regret. I told him that this will work with a 13900K uh, so long that either um, this motherboard came with a BIOS update for the 13900K um, or the 13th gen or one of two things. I can do this easily. Um, we can either do a BIOS flashback, uh, this board is capable of it, or we can, I can just take my 12900K uh, KS right out of my She-Hulk build temporarily to put it in this, update the BIOS, and then put his 13900K back in. Uh, so we're all set on that, and he's going to love this um, because I love it and I want it, especially that 13900K. Um, but, yeah, can't have everything. All right, so now we're going to get this thing out of the box. Um, in here, when you first open it up, you got your Wi-Fi antenna. We'll be, uh, I'll probably temporarily install that so we can connect to the Wi-Fi, get all those updates done, um, and all that nonsense. Um, we have our motherboard, of course. Very, very nice. Look at this. Here's the back. And of course, the most important part is all of your inputs and outputs. And for our uh, CPU, which I said before, uh, we have the 13900K. This is the wafer shell that it actually comes in. They're pretty nice. I got the 12900KS one. And it's just a simple pull apart. Oh. My bad. I forgot you gotta line these up. So you can see there's arrows on there. So that's a lock, unlock. And then we pull it apart. Uh, get it upside down here. There she is. Right here is just the retention clip. And you just pull it around to the side like that. Let that up. And then we're going to uh, go from this end and lift this end up just like that to expose 1,700 individual pins in there. So for our CPU, there's a little spot right here where you can get your thumb under and just keep prying at it. It will come up. And it's actually stuck to the, there we go. So this isn't super delicate, but you know, you know, I say be patient with it and take your time. Let me point out something here. This is upside down, but who cares? You see this arrow? There's also an arrow on the green part. And you also have notches. See the notches in the green? You have them on the bottom and on the top. You have a couple of notches. Those notches are offset. So if you can see, there's a longer distance from here to this notch than there is from this end to this notch. And it's the same identical on the top and the bottom. And you'll see notches on the actual um, uh, socket here. You'll see the notches, one's longer than the other. So you can confidently tell where this goes 
And also, there's supposed to be an arrow here. And I mean, I guess it's kind of an arrow. It It's not very definite. It doesn't really look like an arrow, but it, it kind of is on here. So you know exactly which direction this socket goes. And you are just going to place this in just like so. And give this a little wiggle, just back and forth. You know that's set. Now on these uh, chipsets, you need to take this part off first. Then you can take this lever and go down with it, just like this. There's going to be a lot of tension on it. And once you get it under that little lip, you're good, you're installed, that's not going anywhere. The other thing too, do not throw these out uh, when you take it off of that CPU uh, socket. These you need to keep around in case you need to do an RMA um, or return the motherboard uh, for any reason. They will not honor it unless this is installed. All right, for storage, we have actually three uh, 980 Pros, two at one terabyte each, and then we have one of them that is a two terabyte. So we're gonna get these installed. Two of them are brand new um, for the one terabytes, and the two terabyte is actually a used one that he bought that he wants me to install, so I have to do a lot of testing on it, make sure it's good. These ones should be good, but nevertheless, we will still do the testing on these. All they do is they sit in the packages like so. You just gotta get your hand under it, and boom, there she is, the 980 Pro. And now we're gonna put our first one in the most upper position. These have captive screws in it because I'm not getting a lot of close-ups uh, during this video. So these just have uh, captive screws. Like I said, they will not come out. And we have our thermal tape on the back here, which we do have to peel off. And we'll get that all nice and ready for us. We also have on the board here, you can see that blue is more uh, just tape that we have to remove and get that out. Now the way these go in you can see that there is a notch right here and that notch will line up with the uh, the spot here on the motherboard. And when you install it you should have a little spring like feel to it just like that and we're going to turn that little guy right there you can see you can put a longer ssd in there but i don't have one but there's just a little little dial right there it's uh it just spins that's all it does and now we can place this back on make sure you got it going the correct way and this will get a little sticky if you don't get it right and the screw holes are misaligned. Uh, looks like I got it. Also, I want to point out there are two other, three other spots we can put M.2s. There's one right here and then you can put one here and one over here. And we're going to leave those out for right now until I get Windows installed on the upper drive so I can differentiate between where the SSDs are. Um, so I'm not putting Windows on a different one by mistake and think I did it on the right one. So we're going to leave it like this until I get it installed and make sure everything works properly. All right, so now what do we got for RAM? We have the Corsair. Uh, this is the Dominator Platinum RGB. Yeah, he's not going with a lot of RGB. He's going to have a little bit, uh, but nothing he has to really uh, concentrate too much on as far as maintenance goes. Uh, this is just a simple 5200 uh, hertz. It's not, it's not really that fast for DDR5. Um, 
it's decently priced for for 64 gigabytes. Um, this is two sticks of 32 gigabytes each. So uh, nice kit. I think I have an identical kit in um, my main build, um, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, let's get this stuff in. Uh, to put these in, again, just like the M.2s, uh, we put NVMe in there, but there's a difference between M.2 NVMe and, N and M.2 SATA. But this has a notch. And on your motherboard for the RAM, there's four slots that we could possibly put this in. Two of them will be optimized, uh, and the other two won't be if you're only using one stick or two sticks of RAM. So you have to confirm either on the motherboard. Uh, Gigabyte is actually pretty good. Um, I believe in, in Asus, it's actually telling me right on the motherboard which slots to use first. Um, and I'll get you a close-up here of just that. So you can see right here, it says DIM. I'm not really talking to the mic here, but DIM A1, DIM A2, DIM B1, and DIM B2. Now you can see that bracket right next to it. It says one. That means use those first. So it's point DIM A2 and DIM B2. Why on God's earth would you want to use, or would you think, as a normal human being, you wouldn't use number one first and number two second, but they want to use A2 and B2 instead of A1 and... It's so messed up how they do this stuff, but whatever. Uh, so on Asus, generally speaking, you only have one side of these connectors that actually will move. And you can do just the two that you want, but we want an A2, which is the second one in. And these have an orientation with that notch. So once you get it in there, um, you may find out that it's in the wrong position. Like this one is in the wrong position. And I kind of wanted to do this just to demonstrate, but this won't go any further than that. That notch on the board will not line up. So you got to take this back out, flip it around, get it in, in its position. And right there, it's ready to lock down. You take a thumb on either side or, you know, get over top of it, maybe so you're more centered. I'm doing this for show because I've done this plenty of times. Um, but you go for one side and you'll hear a very strong click and then the other side. And if you didn't notice, but this little um, latch here came up and latched. So that is locked in. It's not going anywhere. All right, guys, so we have our motherboard pretty much prepped. Now, with this case, uh, you can go ahead and put the motherboard in and then put the cooler bracket onto the uh, CPU area or the motherboard um, second because this thing has a nice cutout here. You can actually remove this piece so we can get to the front and the back. A lot of... Um, other cases will not allow you to do that. So you just have to be mindful of that. I know I can do it on this case. So instead of prepping it here, I'll just do it while it's on the uh, the case. Or, yeah, the case. When the motherboard is attached to the case, and I'll do it then. And uh, sometimes you can, you even should leave your, C, or, uh, your RAM out. Um, it makes it a little easier to get your uh, hands down. So now I have to go behind the RAM and, you know, and plus for video shooting, sometimes that doesn't make it that great. But uh, we'll see what we can do uh, as far as that goes. All right, guys. So in your hardware that comes with your case, you should be getting some hardware that looks like this, the screws. They're kind of coarse. They, uh, you can see it in the palm of my hand. Got some dry fingers I see there. So um, you get a whole bunch of them. Normally you get way more than what you need. Uh, the other thing you have to take a look at is in here you'll have standoffs that they screw into. And um, you just have to make sure that the standoffs are in the correct spot. Usually like a case like this will come um, standard where you don't have to change any of those around. But just make sure your holes on your motherboard match up with the standoffs that are on the uh, case that are pre-installed. Uh, that hole that I was talking about on the motherboard, right here you can see we're not even gonna be putting 
a uh, screw into so that actually works out. Uh, it just looks like one, two, three on the bottom, two in the center, and then one, two, three on the top. And you can see these two are always closer and these ones are further away. And then what we do is we come over here and we match up to see what we have. We have one, two, three. And then we have one, which this one has the hole in it, right? It's kind of hard to see. There we go. There's the hole. So we got one and then two here, but that's just going to use a standoff. We're not even going to be doing it. It's just kind of a guide. And then our third hole is back here. And then up on the top, we have one hole here and two, and you can see way over here. I'm looking at the camera, so my hands are going backwards. Um, and one thing before you put this in, we want to do our famous peel. Oh, let's peel it. Ooh, yeah. So, you're going to put this in like so. Like I said, this is a lot easier laying down. Not you laying down, the case. And we pick it up. Some stuff in the way there. And you just got to line it up. Somehow line it up. All right, this one's being a booger. I'm looking for the, uh, there we go. All right, I just had to get it onto that thing, but you can see it kind of just sits here now. It's a little crooked, but it does sit here. And now around the back side, we can remove this plate. Uh, it's just got a thumb screw here, but the thumb screw is pretty tight. Um, and we can take this off. Now you can permanently leave this off um, or stick it back on, but this plate also allows you to, so this is the part you're going to see. But if you were to turn this around, it actually says HDD, hard disk drive, or an SSD, solid state drive. So these are mounting hole options to where if you were like this, you could actually mount a mechanical hard drive, like a, a 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive or a 2.5 inch SSD. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, that allows you to mount a fourth one, essentially. And with the bracket down at the bottom, you can actually mount two more of either style. All right, and for our cooler, we have the uh, Rogue Strix. Uh, this is the Asus Rogue Strix LC2360 uh, Rad here. It's an all-in-one cooler, or AIO. Um, this is AM5 compatible, um, and also 17th, or 1700 uh, socket compatible. So, in the box, what do we need? So we should get out the instructions, and I probably will, just to make sure we're doing this all correctly. But we are 100% going to need these four pieces. These are thumb screws with a uh, Phillips end on it, so you can uh, tighten them down. And let's see. I don't remember which ones I need, but I think it's the shorties. So you have two options here. You have one short and one long. I believe it's the sh short. Well, maybe it's the long one. Maybe it's the long one. It might be the long one. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, it's got to be the long one. Let's check the instructions first. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to grab this bracket, and you can see how it's got some uh, skinny top, skinny bottom, and the two sides. That's the way it goes in uh, from the back, but you can see these pieces. They go in from the back um, to the front. So you can line up like the bottom first or the top first and then uh, just get that to slip in there. Just like that. And then you're going to turn it around, grab either end of this So grab either end, they are the same length, 
and you're going to thread these in to that bracket. Now what you're also going to need is a six millimeter uh, nut driver and you're going to have to get on these and tighten them down. And what you're going to notice is you're going to notice that this bracket, even after you tighten those down, they should be snug. Don't go crazy tight on them, um, but they should be snug. But you're going to see this whole entire thing actually moves. Okay, it's pretty normal. When you put on the cooler on the front and you put these nuts on to these studs after the cooler and the bracket's all on, it's going to pull that bracket forward uh, towards the front here and then apply pressure to the, uh, apply the heat sink pressure to the um, CPU. So you're going to be fine with the way that that is. One thing I'm going to do right now is actually attach the CPU power up here to the top because once we get the uh, radiator in, uh, it just makes it a little more difficult to get in here. So I just want to go ahead and do that before I um, forget. These are not very long, but whatever, they'll work. Um, so we're going to mount the radiator up top here and we are going to be uh, pushing air up through the radiator and exhausting because heat rises. So that's the direction I want this to go in. So which means these are going to be facing inside and this bracket on the back is going to be facing the radiator. Also what comes in your um, AIO or radiator is a package of screws. You have some long, some short, and you have washers. Um, if you are using the long ones, generally speaking, you're going to be using the washers with the long ones going through the fan into the radiator. Don't go through the radiator into the fan if you could even do that. Um, the short ones are meant to mount the radiator to the bracket support on top or on the front. Uh, so you go through the case into the radiator with the short ones with washers. All right, so now we have our fans all properly installed with the wires coming off all in the same direction, uh, kind of important. Um, and it uh, doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's a little smaller radiator than I was expecting. Um, but anyway, we're going to uh, install this uh, just like this up and in here. And uh, I have to get all the small screws with the washers put on them. And we have 12 holes, uh, 12 threaded holes that we have to screw from the top of the case down into the top of the radiator. Uh, radiator support bracket so um, yeah don't put long screws down through the top of the case into this you might puncture and probably will puncture and ruin the uh, fins anyway of uh, cooling fins and now that i have this installed i only have two screws holding it on one on the front one on the back or back, front, whatever, uh, and on opposite sides, just so I can relax, I don't have to hold it. This will slide around. It goes forward and backwards. So I would suggest putting this thing on, getting this thing mounted, and then running this in its optimal position. It's probably gonna be back this way a little bit just because the length of the hoses isn't the best. But I might be able to put it here and then uh, put it back that way slightly. So that's our next step is we're gonna get this installed and, um, get that tightened down. Now your coolers uh, typically come with um, thermal paste already applied so you don't have to do anything. The only thing you have to do is take the cover off. Um, and there's a couple things we gotta worry about where things are going is one this is uh, gonna get hooked up to your CPU um, uh, header on your motherboard and CPU fan header that is. And then we have a USB uh, port so it can control the pump and uh, the RGB within the pump uh, face. So those are the two things. Also, you're just going to need those uh, thumb, uh, 
what do you call them? Thumb nuts, or nut, nut thumbs, thumb nutty, nutty thummy. Uh, yeah, those things. So we're gonna take this off. We are going to twist this so the logo is facing hopefully the correct direction here. Looks good there. And we just start. So this is where the ram gets in the way a little bit of putting these little nuts on. And now you can take your screwdriver and draw these in little by little. I usually just go, you know, crisscross pattern type style. And go till they're all snug. That one wasn't that snug. I'm going to back this one off just a little bit. And get this one snug. That one snug. Now this one can go snug. Now these ones can take a little bit of torque. Because now you're pulling the bracket in and and draw and pulling the bracket back towards us and and drawing the cooler in towards the CPU to make uh, great contact or optimal contact, right? All right, so now we have a couple cables to hook up. Um, we have our RGB cable slash pump. Um, I don't know if this is pump power or not. It, this might just be, it is five volts, so it's probably pump power. Uh, but you also have the a CPU uh, header here, which also could be pump power. I don't know which is which, to be honest. But we need to route this up here um, into a position where it says CPU um, fan header. Not the optional one, but the, the, the main one or number one. And then this has got to get connected. Uh, this is a USB, like micro USB. So it is directional. So you can see it's got a flat spot on this end. And then the other side has a little more rounded edges. So um, it only goes in one way, and we're going to guess. Never thought I'd struggle with a USB connector. There we go. All right, guys. So this is going to be our first boot up. I'm um, all set. I got my HDMI cable connected. Power cable's connected. I'm not going to bother with anything else. This is just to see if it posts. Um, and if we need to do a BIOS update to even run this. So here goes nothing. We're gonna turn our power supply on. There we got some fancy lights for the first time. Very nice. And we're gonna come right up here to our power button. And I'm not seeing any of the fans running right now. I don't know why. It could be the CPU issue. I think this needs a uh, BIOS update first. So we're gonna do that. Okay so here's the deal is my fans weren't working because um, I forgot to plug in the hub to SATA power. And I also um, went ahead and swapped out my CPU um, or his CPU with mine. And <clears throat> so now it should recognize it um, without a problem. So let's go ahead and do this. All our fans are spinning. And we're looking for a signal on here. I'm hoping. Not quite sure what's going on. <clears throat> so, I'm going to give this a minute and see what it does. If it doesn't boot, then I might do a BIOS flashback um, and see if that works. All right, so just a quick update here. Um, it is doing a BIOS update. Um, I had to use my monitor over here on my main desk. Um, we're going from version 803 
to 21 something, 2103. Um, and for some reason, maybe somebody can tell me, but for some reason, the PC would not post on this big monitor. Nothing would come up. I hooked it up to that monitor, and everything came up fine. Very strange. Never seen that before. I thought maybe it was the cable or something, but I don't know. So, anyway, sorry for that glare and that dimness. Um... So we're just letting this update, and then we'll see what's the next step. All right, I just wanted to point out something. So before I started to do the BIOS, because I kind of forgot to say this, between the glitches, between going from monitor to monitor, and um, why it wasn't showing up, this may have been a, an old BIOS issue. Um... Because the other issue I noticed is it was only showing the RAM speed of 5100. This was 5200 megahertz, so it was only showing 5100. In other words, it's capable of that speed. Um, but right now, because DDR5 runs at um, 4800 coming right out of the box, and uh, until you enable XMP or DOCP um, or the other extreme, whatever it is, um, <clears throat> You won't, you won't see those top speeds that's advertised until you enable that. But I was seeing 5100 when this RAM was capable of 5200. So that in itself was very strange. Now, after this BIOS update, now it's showing 5200. So I'm thinking there may have been an old BIOS issue uh, with some stuff. So... Um, but right now, what we're going to do is just uh, load the optimal settings and a reboot. Um, and then uh, we are going to probably um, install Windows. Okay, so yeah, that was fun. Um, I put in the 13900K back, back into the uh, unit. Uh, and it posts just fine now since the BIOS update. Um, I think right now what we're going to do is install Windows 10. Yes, we're going with Windows 10. He does not want Windows 11. I confirmed that. I even told him it is, it, you know, with this CPU, uh, it is going to be optimal for Windows 11, but he wants to stick with Windows 10. Um, so he's the boss. He's the one who's paying. So um, that's what we're going to do for him. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to walk you through the Windows because this video is going to be long enough. Um, I do have a couple other videos where I walk through how to install Windows 10 specifically. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and check those out on my channel. Um, so, yeah, I'll get Windows 10 installed and I'll be right back. And now we're going to add a couple more SSDs. Uh, this being the Samsung 980 Pro. This is the NVMe. And uh, this is the M.2 form factor, uh, just like the one I installed before. This one's just going to be for extra storage. And another extra storage that he wanted was another Samsung 980 Pro. This is a 2 terabyte, however. Uh, he did purchase this used. I did let him know that I do have to do a little more... Uh, testing specifically on this one. I don't know if there's any data on it. I don't know if it was new and not used. I don't know if it's initialized. I don't know anything about this drive. So we have to test that. Nevertheless, we are going to test all the other ones, uh, you know, through Crystal Disk Info, Crystal Disk Mark, and uh, check those out. So I do have to remove the heat sink off of this one, but we're going to go to a couple other slots here that are on the motherboard. Now, the remainder three slots all support NVMe, and they also support um, uh, Generation 4 or Gen 4. Um, so they're all going to run at the speeds that are advertised on this box. So if you are looking, this does have, you know, like I said, this does have three other uh, spots we could put the drives, but... Just make sure with your motherboard manual that you can support the drive that you are trying to install. Otherwise, you may be disappointed.
Now let's fire this thing up and check to see if we need to do anything extra with that two terabyte that was used and check them both out as far as crystal disc info and crystal disc mark. All right guys, so I'm behind the microphone now so it might sound a little different, but let's check these drives, see if they need initialize, go to disk management. It should pop up, which it did both of them. So they are both uninitialized, which is great. So whoever owned this, the, uh, the other one last, um, seems like they did a good job. Um, let's see. We both want GPT for both the disks. And now we have disk one and disk two. All right, so we're gonna create a new simple volume on these, and I wanna go to disk, disk two first, um, because that is the one terabyte, and I wanna go from C drive to D drive, the letter D. So we're gonna, anywhere in this area right here, we're gonna do a right click, come up here to new simple volume, go through these steps. Now, okay, so I immediately noticed <clears throat> this went to letter E, and we don't have letter D. And the reason being we don't have a letter D is because this is open. See how D right there? So what I have to do is close this out and go remove that drive. So our D drive is not showing up still. So what we have to do is we have to cancel this, go back in here again, new simple volume, go through the steps, and now our D shows up again. So we go next. You do not have to name this. We are not going to, but you want to leave it on quick, uh, perform a quick format. And finish. And now we have a whole new hard drive right there. Well, solid state drive. And now we're going to come to disk one, new simple volume. Next, we want the whole thing. This one we're going to keep as letter E. And this is all the same. Nothing's going to change here. Next, finish. And there we go. So let's check the info. Make sure all the drives look good to us. And we can tell that our used drive, you see how our our C drive, power on counts, 16. That was from the factory. That's just how many read and writes they did from the factory. That's all normal. Our D drive, basically nothing, which is strange. Um, and then our E drive, which has been used, 77 power on counts, 122 hours. It's not much. Um, we only got 1.6 terabytes written. Um, so yeah, we're good. It was a good it was a good purchase so far. Now let's check out the crystal disc mark. And let's go ahead and test our C drive first and let's see the results. All right, guys, check out them numbers. Not too shabby. Uh, looks pretty good. All right, so let's check out drive D. Same test. All right, guys, so those results are pretty good, too. So we're going to go ahead and check out the E drive now.
Now again, this is the drive that was in question. Uh, so far it looks like it's pretty good numbers though. All right, so let's run a little Prime 95 here. CPU temp, 33. That's one of the main ones we want to watch. We're going to just keep this all stock settings, or default settings, and just run this um, as a blend, 24 cores. Right now our CPU temp, is at 72, it hit 81 for a moment. Oh, we hit 99, not liking that. So as you could see, the 13900K runs very hot and it was running at its max at 100 degrees Celsius. And that's because it runs at 300 watts consistently. It doesn't back off ever, like some of the previous uh, generations. This one just, it's balls to the walls, constantly goes and does not quit. So it kind of reached that temperature pretty quick and it's just gonna stay there. And I don't wanna run Prime 95 with it just running at 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, for you know 15 20 minutes i think that's ridiculous so he's not going to play a game or do anything that's going to cause that thing to run that hot anyway so what we're going to do is turn off the um uh, there's an intel a uh, boost technology in the bios that we're going to disable and we're also going to disable the asus uh, BIOS uh, boosting technology, whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called, but we're going to turn those two things off and then rerun Prime 95 and let's see the results from that. We're at 84C right now. 88. We're at 89C. Well, I was looking at the max temp, so we hit 89C for a max temp. Now it's down to 67. We've been on about a minute and a half now. Okay, currently we're at 89C again. 91 we've already gone over two minutes we're at about five minutes now so this is running a lot nicer well now you have it by turning those two things off it actually reduced it increased our, our prime 95 time i ran it for 20 minutes full and it never got above i think it was the 80 Oh, 91C. I was just looking at it here. I still have it on the screen. So it never got above 91C for the max, um, and it ran all the tests perfectly fine. So I'm, I'm very pleased and happy with that. Uh, I mean, we're going to turn everything back on so he has, you know, full utilization with the chip or the, the CPU. Um, but just to run Prime 95, I just want to make sure that everything is good uh, to go uh, with those off because you know that was crazy but anyway uh we're going to run the uncle carrie's whole uncle carrie holzman um optimizer windows 10 optimizer on this to get it ready for him uh that is one of the next steps i have to do so why don't you check this one out all right well i totally forget to hit record uh for the uncle carrie's windows 10 optimizer uh, but I'll just walk you through a couple of the steps that you would do is you would go to um, oh, go to his YouTube channel and uh, you can find this under a lot of his videos. You can find the link to get there. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. But anyway, you download it. When you get to that link, you have to pay, I think it's like seven bucks. It's not a bad price for this. Otherwise, you have to do all this manually. Um, so you get it on a drive and you just run this executable file now because i already ran this it's not gonna allow me to do it again see it says the system is already fully optimized but we can see all these boxes here now normally what you would see is a bunch of check marks that you can uncheck so if we wanted to do it again and we could always do that so that's what it would look like and you can uncheck it whatever stuff you do or don't want you uncheck and you can set this even to performance or power saving. 
Uh, but usually I leave it all on default and you just click apply and that will run through the script. It'll put like this PC right here on the desktop. Um, it'll show the uh, file extensions and disable ads and uh, app suggestions. So a lot of different things that are pretty nice. Now let's get the Silverstone. This is the ES02 USB 2.4 gigahertz. This is a remote control to turn your PC on or off or reset it. It just comes with a uh, fob here. And I know I'm getting a ring light there and, and focus. So um, yeah, I've never installed one of these so I'm just going to uh, see how it installs. Um, I think it goes to the uh, 2.0 connector um, or USB 2.0 uh, header on your motherboard. Okay, and here you can see where the unit is actually plugged in. You can see right here. And it just plugged into one of those two optional ports that we have. And this is all cable management I'll have to do. We pulled the power, um, the power switch off of right here and the reset switch. And we tied it into the cables that come off of that unit. You don't have to do this, but this allows you uh, to still turn it on and off from the top. Just want to show you here, these are the fans that we're going to be installing. I know this is not what comes with a case, um, but let's just take this out of the box and uh, take a quick look at them before I install them. Okay, so in the box, we get this fan. Here's the back. And you also get four screws uh, for these fans. And these are actually a little bit longer uh, than some of the uh, screws. See right here, you can tell how far the rubber goes in and then it turns to plastic in the center there. So that's the distance that you need to cover in order to uh, start threading in. That's why the screws are longer. All right, so I have got all the fans hooked up and I sort of temporarily wired them up so we can test those out in a second. But instead of just turning the PC on just to test the fans, we're going to install his new graphics card and make sure that displays properly and get this tested. So he's got the Asus. Um, this is the GeForce GTX. This is the 1080 um, Ti. Almost forgot that it was a TI. So this is the tough uh, version. And uh, yeah, pretty nice graphics card. Um, so we're gonna, this is a 12 gigabyte model. Um, so we're gonna give this a, a try and uh, make sure everything's good with this one. <sighs> the smell of a new car smell, only in PC parts. Love it. We got a bunch of plastic on this, we gotta peel off. Uh, there's the back, not bad looking. That's what we're gonna primarily see. And he has quite a few ports in this. We're gonna keep them all uh, with these in here, but looks like, what do we have? We have three display ports. We have two HDMIs. So, yep, very nice. But these actually have to come out temporarily. Um, just so I can pull this um, protective uh, stuff off. Um, not that I don't want to leave it on there, um, but I'm afraid he's going to miss that, so we're just going to take that off for him. And then we're going to put these back in and put this card in. And of course you also have to take off your um, couple of the brackets back here. Uh, this looks like two brackets that we need to take off, and sometimes it's a good idea. You could just hold it up to where it's gonna be. And we have the second one down and the one below that one to take off. Now I do have a video on how to install a graphics card properly, so you can um, reference to that. Um, I'm not gonna get a close up for this, but it's basically you just put it in here like so. And we are going to lock that in. And now we got to start these thumb screws. All 
All right, so now with the graphics card installed, I have the two uh, power cables going to the graphics card. Uh, now we're gonna run the HDMI off the graphics card and see if we get a picture, as long as we do. Um, then we are going to uh, download and the drivers for it and make sure we get all those installed properly. And then we can do a Cinebench test. Um, we can do a Heavens Benchmark test uh, and those just to make sure everything's going good with the graphics card. And after that, we have one more thing to install and then it's basically cable management, a few more tests, and it's gonna be ready to ship. So stick around. I just want to say I just started it up and if we pan over here we have if you can hardly see it there it is so everything's working great so I'm going to download the graphics card drivers uh, from here um, I'm not going to kind of show you how to do that I have other videos uh, demonstrating on that but for this, we're going to go to NVIDIA site and uh, grab the latest driver and put that on. All right, guys. So right now, I'm actually running Heaven's Benchmark. Um, you can see right here behind me. And one other thing that I had noticed, and I've seen this before, and it's nothing wrong with the graphics card, but it is annoying. So if you have the PC close... Uh, the, the panel is going to quiet it down a little bit, but I'm going to be quiet. I want you to listen to this. This has what's called a coil uh, screech or whine. It's basically just the current running through all the inductors, and it's normal. There's nothing wrong with it, but listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of annoying. So, um, anyway, I'm just going to let this thing run uh, for a while and keep looping and make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Right here you can actually see the Cinebench running. Uh, this is the R23 edition. Um, it's got six more minutes to go. It's been running for about four minutes. And right here you can see uh, that it is beating the AMD Threadripper, um, last generation Threadripper anyway. So we're running at 95C right now. This is CPU intensive. So this is something he wanted to put in. Uh, this is a Sound Blaster card. I did let him know that the, the uh, sound system built into this uh, for the audio driver is decent. It's still got 7.1 surround sound, but he wanted something uh, that's just slightly better. Um, so we are going with this guy right here. It's the AE-7 from Sound Blaster. And uh, yeah, looks kind of cool. So anyway, I'm gonna install this now. So here's the card itself. Um, and on the bottom there, there's your pins. Goes on the PCI, there's the back. And um, here's your, all your inputs or outputs, input and outputs, right? Um, so you have, uh, looks like microphone, headphone, and then you have uh, all your stuff for your surround sound for speakers. And you also have an optical um, output right there. Get you a nice close view. Well, I've got the sound card installed and I've got a pair of earphones. I want to check out the sound card itself to make sure that we're producing some sound uh, before I hook up the DAC and then we'll figure out. I just got my YouTube channel up and we're going to plug this guy in somewhere here. Uh, looks like right to there. So far nothing. So I'm missing some sort of a step. So I did get the, uh, what they call the, um, the Sound Blaster Command uh, software installed plus the driver. Um, I wasn't getting audio for a while, so that's apparently what the reason was. So, but we can clearly hear it. 
this is just a cheap pair of headphones um, that I hooked up temporarily. Uh, now I'm going to hook up the DAC and see if that still uh, works. So this works. And I'll adjust the volume up. Uh, I just want to show you the cloning part uh, specifically. But so. It's not super loud, but it works. Well, the next steps for me is to do the cable management, and there's a couple other tests and a few other things I want to do on the computer. It, I won't record any of that. This video has gone long enough as it is. I can just feel all the uh, the length of the uh, uh, editing that I'm going to have to do on this. Uh, but I try to put in all the issues that I've been having um, just to kind of let you know, uh, but to just keep the camera rolling, it takes forever to get through some of these for a little bit of research and trying to figure out what's going on. But, uh, with that said, I'm probably going to like install VLC player on for him. I'm going to install, uh, you know, uh, Google Chrome and, uh, a couple little things like that just to make, uh, his life easier for downloading it. But otherwise... Uh, this thing's pretty much set. I've gone through all the testing. I actually might run through Memtest 86. I'll run that like an overnight thing. You can actually do that with the new BIOS or the new um, motherboards in their BIOS. They, at least with ASUS, they actually have a Memtest 86 that you can do right within the BIOS. So you don't actually have to download it and run it as a, a thumb drive or a boot drive for that. Uh, but I already have it, so I'm, that's probably what I'm going to use. So, and that usually with 64 gigabytes. It's going to take six, seven hours to do. So best just walk away from it and, uh, you know, go do whatever. So I'm going to do some cable management on this, and then I'll show you probably the final product um, and what it looks like. Um, I mean, you can kind of see what it looks like, but, you know, with the cable management, it's a mess back there. So I'm going to get that taken care of and uh, stay right there. I'll be right back. <laughs> So this thing turned out amazing. I'm jealous. I want it. And I think I'm going to keep it. No, just kidding. Uh, it's got to get down to uh, Rich down in Florida. Hopefully I'm going to box it up. Well, I'm going to box it up tonight. And tomorrow I'm hoping to ship it out. If not, it's going to go out uh, the next day. But I'm um, very excited. The only issue I did have is with the remote and receiver. I just forgot to hook up the wires to the motherboard. I don't know what I was thinking, but I took a break, walked away for uh, a period of time, came back, and it kind of just quickly dawned on me what I was forgetting. So I forgot those, and then you have to hook up uh, these uh, power and reset button wires up to the pigtails of the, of the receiver wires. So after that, it worked perfectly fine. I wish I could demonstrate it for you right now. However, it is packed up with his parts and accessories in his motherboard box. And that is getting shipped out to him uh, as well. But that's, like I said, all taped up. I'm not getting into it just to demonstrate a remote. I will, however, probably do a separate video on that just to uh, clear any issues up I had during this video. So... Uh, I left the front panel off just so you could see in here because it is um, very difficult to see through the tinted glass, let alone it still has the film on the inside and outside of the panel that has to get removed, but I'm not going to do that because it's not my PC. It has to travel all the way from New York, um, upstate New York here, all the way down to Florida. Uh, the cable management's done, all the testing's been done, everything's working out very good, and uh, I think I did mention in the video, because uh, this is the next day, so I'm trying to remember everything that I did, but I think I did mention in the video that um, the, the Prime 95 uh, has an issue running, or, or the computer has an issue running Prime 95, it, it gets very hot very quick, it jumps right up to 100C, uh, because the turbo, so the motherboard and the Intel overclocking or uh, the turbo mode, 
um, I forget what they're called, but um, is enabled. So if it's normal for this thing to run hot like this, I mean, because the 13th gen runs even hotter than the 12th gen. So it won't run for very long, but just a couple of minutes. So once you turn those off in the, in the BIOS, it actually runs perfectly cool. But that is with pushing this thing to its absolute max, which nobody will ever do under normal usage, even heavy game usage. Um, so anyway, uh, that's all set. It's running perfectly fine. Um, everything else has been tested, and we're going to get this uh, video wrapped up here. I just wanted to mention a couple things like that. But if you feel like you want to comment down below, go ahead. Feel free. Um, I also have to approve all those comments, so if you don't see them right away, that is why. I have to pre-read them and then approve them. So you might not see it till the next day. I might be sleeping. I do do that once in a while. So uh, other than that, uh, do that. You can like this. Hit that like button. Also, feel free to share it and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe and hit that little bell icon. Um, next to the subscription button. That way you can get notified of any future videos that I post. And uh, But until next time, guys, take care.